Upon boarding, I identified myself being instantly, though begrudgingly, tolerated since everyone knew our celebrity's feelings for me. I relaxed a while, unwinding from my traumatic escapade. From passing Zeppelin, from which hung a battered black, white, gray slate, dark gray, grizzled, and granite striped, straight pride flag, Bill's message blared, Congratulations, you're cruising with your future sweetheart! Bedraggled and extremely lonely from my isolated trips, I finally acquiesced to his loquacity and chastisement, now commencing to pursue my soul in amoratum. Privately searching, I floundered. Again, blaring from the airship, Bill's further information revealed her name, Chichalube. Throughout the, the paraclete, I called her. Finally, hollering her name by a large segregated deck area, pounding ensued, the whole vessel quaking. Suddenly, I was stupefied. A Tyrannosaurus Rex barreled forward, eyes wide, and mouth agape. Flying down the gangway, I cartwheeled down the companionway, falling into the furthest recesses. Shortly thereafter, I discovered that the Super Tyrannosaurus, a much larger genetically enhanced composite creature, was my designated interest. Mortified by the bizarre circumstance, our interpersonal relationship progressed languorously. Stage one consisted of psychosomatic denial of her existence. Stage 2 encompassed the grudging matter-of-fact realization. An examination with extremely complicated instruments facilitated Stage 3, realizing this being's divine importance. Yet attraction, love, and full dedication in integral to serious relationships worldwide still eluded me. While the genetically modified dinosaur was being tested and I milled around, some e egotist approached with a puzzle cube, six sides of six distinct colors. After twisting the segments until they were jumbled together, she reassembled the sides in about a minute, or scrambled them again and had me try it. Frustratingly, after I fumbled for ten minutes making no progress, she said, You can't do anything right. From a distance, Chichalube, middle name Scientia, wheeled around, scampered forward, and snatched the cube. In a blur, the cube was solved almost instantaneously. Chichalube thundered, Bring one liter each of red, yellow, blue, white, and black paint, empty bottles, and sticks. After the supplies arrived and people gathered round, they thoroughly mixed and scrambled the paint into a bucket until the original colors were totally obliterated, leaving a five liter mass of thick, gooey brown. Teacher Luke juggled, stirred, shook, swirled, tossed, dissected and reorganized the paint, pouring it into five bottles. Out popped the original red, yellow, blue, white, and black leaders. Astonished beyond belief, people cried, It's impossible! Chichilub replied, No, that's your disability. Observing the dinosaur's meals, smorgasbords featuring chainsaw quartered buffalo marinated with pineapple in its mouth, prepared by ostentatious cordon bleu chefs, repulsed me. Assessing my nonverbal cues, Teacher Loop intuitively said, though perfectly understandable, your presuppositions are incorrect. Teacher Loop proclaimed, though socially unacceptable to verbalize profound gender, racial, and ethnic differences exist, infantile, emotionally based syllogisms notwithstanding. While humans exercise free will via their spirit nature, their chemical and chromosomal predispositions subjugate them. This determinism their biological nature is fixed. Furthermore, I thoroughly analyzed the cerebellum and frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobes, along with their gyrice, sulci, and fissures of both sexes of every race, subrace, and micro race. I've likewise mapped every pathway of every neuron extant. Therefore, I'm a highly accurate predictor of human behavior. That humans cannot master either mind or body should be quite humble. And Chichil went on. Overacting to past pigeonholing and prejudice, our fickle society obfuscates class differences and predilections. Without opportunity to know everyone individually, incorporating generalizations is natural. For example, considering my appearance to lack formation of negative assumptions and act accordingly, namely not fleeing, would be suicidal since the behavior of various dinosaur species reflects the fall. However, I'm peacefully acclimatized to strictly Pursue vegetation, though I'm eating what's been painstakingly prepared. 
With that major interpersonal barrier removed, our relationship blossomed. Admiring Chichi Lube's statuesque height, towering 7.77 meters, her barrel green body weighing 24 tons like a fortified turret, and her legs like colonnette, I was greatly comforted. Her stormy, scintillating jade eyes flashed upon hearing lies. Still ruminating, I wandered off alone, occasionally spying on Chichi Lube's activities. After I care carelessly deactivated my holographic persona, a coiffed elderly one punished my ineptitude. She grandiosely assumed that I lecherously per perused her. Acting like she had a wasp in her wig, she, her censorious umbrella tip punctured my chest, reminding me that my former affections towards women were absolutely misappropriated. Graciously, Chichalub swooped like a phoenix to the rescue. After miraculously fixing my long ribs and pectoral muscle, Chichalub said, Whatsoever is concealed shall be revealed. Namely, personal character may be completely misinterpreted at length, but true character in invariably surfaces. Despite residual trepidity, communicating directly was thereafter mandatory. Besides, the malignity of those around me magnified Chichalub's sweetness and phenomenological character as she intuitively encapsulated the foundations of all sciences. Reuniting with Chichalu paid dividends, a rapidly wagging tail immediately greeting me through blood lo loss induced semi-consciousness. Since Chichalu was labeled ugly, she rounded up diverse scrap material, imbued it with preternatural power, and assembled it into a transcendental mirror which liberated inner beauty instead. Numerous people gazed upon their inner selves and vomited profusely. Catching a brief glimpse of Chief Chalub's inner reflection, I fainted in ecstasy and, and awoke seven hours later. F finally infatuated, we dined together and romantically walked along under the moonlight. Chief Chalub walked on the lower deck while I walked on the parallel catwalk two stories up. I enjoyed holding hands, her hands being exquisite charterous, that's brilliant golden green, triune appendages culminating in three magnificent steel talents. I also appreciated the novelty of Chichalub's cold-blooded body, especially virtuous in summertime. After the ship dock, Chichalub's armored spinal platelets began vibrating to detect a suitable cavern for us to have some private moons. After finding a location and excavating an entrance large enough for passage, we entered a gargantuan limestone cave resembling the one Chichalub took shelter in to escape the meteor bombardment of the first Earth age. Actually, Chichalub hailed from what is now Cheshire County, England, before mega-earthquakes severed the continents. Among our fascinating surroundings were helictites, twisted flower-like varieties of stalactites extending like phantasmagorical icicles from the cave ceiling. Crystal encrusted stalagmites proudly towered from the cavern floor while a sinuous stream meandered throughout. The whole scene resembled a chimerical fantasy a la the Arabian Nights. This immaculate fortress, a wild bohemian plaza, was home to an astounding array of creatures. Contemplating the cave dweller's predicament, I cried, Why are the cave creatures eyeless? Teacher Lou purred, Many who have eyes cannot see, while many without eyes have inward vision. Eventually, Chichalo, playing negotiatrix, was obligated to meet many others, so he parted ways and I bullet trained home. Stay tuned for part six.